made this place a sanctum of healing and salvation. Why do you threaten it? Strange occupation for a warden. Aren't you more about taint and death, not healing and salvation? Did the warden send you to bring me back? I'm not going. Those bastards made me get rid of my cat. Poor Sir Pounce a lot. He hated the deep roads. You had a cat named Sir Pouncelot in the deep roads. He was a gift. A noble beast. Almost got ripped in half by a Genlock once. He swatted the bugger on the nose. Drew blood, too. The blighted warden said he made me too soft. I had to give him to a friend in Amaranthine. So, you came to Kirkwall just to escape the warden? You say that like it's a small thing. Yes. I'm here because there's no warden outpost, no darkspawn, and a whole host of refugees to blend in with. And some reasons of my own. I've always heard that joining the wardens is for life. That's only partly true. The hopelessly tainted by the darkspawn and plagued by nightmares about the archdemon parts don't go away. But it turns out, if you hide well, you don't have to wear the uniform or go to the parties. I'm part of an expedition into the Deep Roads. Any information you have could save people's lives. I will die a happy man if I never think about the blighted Deep Roads again. You can't imagine what I've come through to get here. I'm not interested in... Although... A favor for a favor. Does that sound like a fair deal? You help me, I'll help you. Let's be more specific. I don't do anything involving children or animals. I have a warden map of the depths in this area. But there's a price. I came to Kirkwall to aid a friend. A mage. A prisoner in the wretched gallows. The Templars learned of my plans to free him. Help me bring him safely past them, and you shall have your maps. Tell me about your friend. His name is Carl Thekla. He was sent here from Ferelden, when Kirkwall Circle required new talent. His last letter said the Knight Commander was turning the Circle into a prison. Mages are locked in their cell, refused appearances at court, made tranquil for the slightest crimes. I told him I would come. Are these accusations true? Ask any mage in Kirkwall. Over a dozen were made tranquil just this year. The more people you ask, the worse the rumors become. You want to make your friend an apostate? That's such a weighted term. Yes, Andraste said magic should serve man, not rule him. But I've yet to find a mage who wants to rule anything. It goes against no will of the Maker for mages to live as free as other men. Forcing mages into servitude is not the way to prevent the rise of another Imperium. That's not usually the response I get. Perhaps we will work together better than I expected. How do you plan to break him out of the gallows? I'm hoping it won't come to that. I sent Carl a message to meet me in the Chantry tonight. Make a willing, he'll be there, alone. But if there are Templars with him, I swear I'll free him from them, whatever the cost. What do the Templars know of your plans? I don't know. I had been exchanging notes with Carl through a maidservant in the gallows. Then the letters stopped coming. I would help any mage in such circumstances, map or no. Better make this good. We're risking a lot if we anger the Templars. I welcome your aid. I have already sent word for Carl to meet me in the Chantry tonight. Join us there, and we'll ensure that no matter who is with him, we all walk away free. I saw Carl go inside a few minutes ago. No Templars so far. Are you ready? I didn't see anyone suspicious out here. Let's do this fast. All right. I'll handle the talking. You watch for Templars. When we find Carl, just let me talk to him.
Anders, I know you too well. I knew you would never give up. What's wrong? Why are you talking like... I was too rebellious, like you. The Templars knew I had to be... made an example of. No! How else will mages ever master themselves? You'll understand, Anders. As soon as the Templars teach you to control yourself. This is the apostate. No! You will never take another mage as you took him! What did you do? It's like... you brought a piece of the Fade into this world. I had already forgotten what that feels like. What did you do? N not the Fade part. The angry glowing bit. It's like a gateway to the Fade inside you. Glowing like a beacon. I have some... unique circumstances, yes. But Carl, what happened? How did they get you? The Templars here are far more vigilant than in Ferelden. They found a letter I was writing you. You cannot imagine it, Anders. All the color, all the music in the world, gone. I would gladly give up my magic. But this... I'll never be whole again. Please, kill me before I forget again. I don't know how you brought it back, but it's fading. Carl, no. Maybe we can find a cure. Can you cure a beheading? The dreams of tranquil mages are severed. There is nothing left of them to fix. I would rather die a mage than live as a Templar puppet. The Tranquil I've met seem content with their lot. Maybe it's not that bad. You have no idea. Your emotions, your dreams, everything stripped away on someone's whim. If I were made Tranquil, I would wish for a friend compassionate enough to kill me. Carl, I'm sorry. Now, it's fading! Why do you look at me like that? Goodbye. <laughs> we should leave before more Templars come. So, let me guess. This is the part where you tell me you're an abomination. You're wrong. But not far wrong. I... This is hard to explain. When I was in Amaranthi, I met a spirit of justice who was trapped outside the Fade. We became friends, and he recognized the injustice that mages in Thedas face every day. And that's different than a demon. Just as demons prey on the deadly sins of mankind, there are good spirits who embody our virtues. Spirits of compassion, fortitude, justice. They are the Maker's first children, and they have all but given up on us. This spirit sounds like a useful friend to have. He was far better to me than I have been to him. To live outside the Fade, he needed a host. I offered to help him. We were going to work together. Bring justice to every child ever ripped away from his mother to be sent to the circle. But... I guess I had too much anger. Once he was inside me, he... changed. So, you have this spirit of justice living in your head? It's not like that. He's gone now. He's part of me. It's not like we can have a conversation. I feel his thoughts as my own. Not even the greatest scholar could tell you where I end and he begins. 
That really didn't look like a happy, benevolent spirit from where I was standing. The Templars will think the same. We're friends with a monster. Since when is justice happy? Justice is righteous. Justice is hard. But my anger, when I see Templars now, things that have always outraged me, but I could never do anything about, he comes out. And he is no longer my friend, Justice. He is a force of vengeance, and he has no grasp of mercy. Can Justice ever be separated from you? I don't think so. The only way a spirit has ever been separated from a living host is by its death. The curse is of my own making. All I can do now is hope to control it. Can you bring him out at will? No. He comes only when I've lost all power over myself. It's a madness, a frenzy. I only find out after what I might have done. So that explains your whole sexy, tortured look. Perhaps I should check a looking glass more often. I've rarely met a man who says such things so openly. But you're obviously a rare man. My maps are yours. As am I, if you wish me to join your expedition. I thought I was done with the Grey Wardens. But if you have any need of me, I will be waiting here. I had a friend like you once. Got in all kinds of trouble. Dragged me along. Didn't think I'd be doing that again. I got a bit weighty the last time we talked. Sorry for putting that on you. You'd be surprised how people just tell me their darkest secrets. I must look trustworthy. You look... something. True. Proud. Like, even if you don't agree with me, you'll be honest. I just... I hope I didn't seem too selfish when I told you about justice. I didn't know what would happen. I figured a willing host, a friend. It had to be better than playing the demon and haunting some corpse. Well, he can't complain about his looks anyway. Growing up in the circle, everything is about order and rules and the Templars. The apprentices, we found ways to make that bearable. Carl and I, he was the first. We could forget that out in the world, we were nothing but Templar slaves. We hadn't been together for a long time. But still, it hurt. You and Carl. I've always believed people fall in love with a whole person, not just a body. Why would you shy away from loving someone just because they're like you? Does it bother you that I've been with men? I'm just glad it didn't take me any longer to find out. It's hard to believe Carl is dead. And at my hand. Damn the Templars. I should have come to Kirkwall sooner. No one should have to go through that. It's the bloody Templars. You know how it is. They don't see us as people. They don't care that Carl was someone's son. Someone's lover. If you're born with magic, they hear about it. They search your little rat's bit village and find you. They tell your parents they'll be thrown in prison if they ever ask about you. Stripped of their rights in the eyes of the Maker. And if you run away, they hunt you down. Again, and again, and again. You're starting to glow again. And since yours is the only head here, and I don't want to rip it off, I should stop. Yes. Sorry. Besides, we have so much to do before the Deep Roads. Next time, I'll try to keep to more... pleasant topics. <laughs>